All right, there we go. Yeah, good morning again. Yeah, I'm excited to be with you guys today. Um, we, this is the first. So right now what we're doing is uh, we're broadcasting live from the, the Edgewood campus and that we've never done that before. Um, so I want to welcome those um, in Wills Point and those who are joining us online. All right, so um, my name is Edward Barrett, and I have the privilege of serving uh, at Stone Point here as, uh, as an elder. And I have a new life in Christ, and I'm recovering from finding my worth in relationships, people-pleasing, and fear of man. Hey, guys. So at, Re- at, at Regeneration, we introduce ourselves um, in this way to acknowledge uh, what our core struggles are and to proclaim that we find all of our identity in, in Jesus Christ and no longer in our brokenness. Um, so... I got to work through um, my struggle of fear of man in preparing to be with you all today. Um, in case you haven't already noticed, I'm pretty nervous about being up here. Um, and public speaking is not necessarily uh, my gifting. It is only by God's grace uh, that I was able to walk through regeneration for the first time of over 10 years ago. And because of his grace, I still get to walk out the steps of recovery today. I'm not completely healed uh, from all my struggles, but I'm struggling well in the way that I can admit it and how I can walk through it in a way that honors the Lord. So for the next four weeks, we're going to spend some time talking about our regeneration ministry, what it is, what it is not, and why it's relevant for every person listening today. You see, regeneration is a biblically-based discipleship program offering healing, recovery, and freedom from any type of struggle, really any sin. Who here struggles with sin? Yeah. So if you didn't raise your hand, you may be struggling with pride. So that really counts you in as well. <laughs> the, the reality is we're all broken due to sin. And Romans 3.10 says it like this. No one is righteous. No, not one. And we all need healing from that brokenness. What's great about a discipleship program versus just another recovery program, is that this program is designed not just to bring about recovery or healing, but to help you become a fully devoted follower of Christ. Recovery programs are great, and they've helped many, countless people through um, addiction. But what makes this different, and what we learn in Scripture, is that alcoholism, drugs, or sexual addiction, gluttony, just fill in the blank, are all symptoms of a greater condition within our hearts. And Jesus says it this way in Luke 6, 43 through 45. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There are 12 steps to this program. But what we will see in these steps are actually what every believer is called to, to walk out every day of their lives in order to be more like him. I'm going to show you uh, these steps briefly just to give an overview of what the Uh, the 12 steps are, but we'll break them down more during the next four weeks. As we review the 12 steps, you'll begin to see a a gospel pattern. So what would you say the the first step into understanding the gospel? Isn't it to realize that we are sinners and that we're all in need of a savior? So the first three steps can be summarized by this, realizing your need for God's grace. Step one is admit. We admit that we're powerless over our sin. Step two is believe that God is the one whose power can fully restore us. And then step three is trust. We need to trust God with our lives and our wills. Romans seven eighteen says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. What this verse is saying is I can't, but God can. And that's the first step of the gospel. And that's also the first steps in regeneration. So after understanding our sin and the need for a Savior, 
1 John 1, 9 says that we confess our sins. God is faithful to forgive us of our sins. So once we realize our need for God's grace, we must then receive God's grace. And we do that by taking an inventory. We inventory our hearts and our lives to determine the exact nature of our sin. And then step five is confess. We confess to God, to ourselves, and to others in accordance with Scripture. And then step six is repent. We turn away from our sin and we turn to God. And really what that says is we confess, turn away from sin, and turn to God. And isn't that true about the gospel? Peter says this in in Acts 2, uh, 38. Repent and be baptized, all of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So once we've we've realized... um, once we realize our need for a Savior and we receive his grace, we then we need to respond to God's grace. And that's the next three steps. Step seven is follow. We follow Christ fully. Step eight is forgive. We forgive those who have harmed us. And then step nine is we make amends. We make amends to all the people that we've harmed. And really what that is, just walking out repentance. Jesus told the Pharisees in Matthew 3.8, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Earlier we talked about, um, in Luke, uh, Jesus was talking about good trees produce good fruit and bad trees produce bad fruit. Um, That's what this is is really talking about here. The fruit that we bear will tell the truth about what we believe and who we trust. The last three steps of regeneration focus on how to continue this journey of walking out God's grace. And that's regeneration because of God's grace. So step 10 is continue. We continue to examine our hearts and our lives, confess and repent. And um, I, had to, I just confessed this morning that I still struggle with the fear of man. And so that's continuing to walk in that. In that. Uh, so step 11 is intimacy. We deepen our relationship with God daily. And then step 12 is regenerate. We carry this message of reconciliation to others. And really what that says is to share and repeat, repeat and share. While this 12-step discipleship program lasts about a year, regeneration is something we're called to practice the rest of our lives. When we complete the program, we haven't gotten to a place where we no longer struggle, but rather we've gathered some tools to help us struggle well. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Isn't it really cool to see how the gospel is woven through these steps? This is why it's relevant for every single person, not just those who are struggling with some sort of addiction. Now that we've walked through an overview of this discipleship program and how it's rooted in God's word, I want to spend the remainder of our time focusing more specifically on the first three, step, on the first three steps. I shared earlier the first step into finding healing and freedom from our sin and struggle is to realize our need for God's grace. And so step one is admit. We admit we are powerless over our addictions, brokenness, and sinful patterns that in our own power, our lives are unmanageable. I get the feeling that some folks in here may have wanted to repeat that with me because that's what we do sometimes in Regen. So yeah, I get you. Yeah. Um, we referenced the scripture that goes with this step earlier in Romans seven eighteen, For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. And that that sums it up really well right there. Admitting means to realize that we need help. And so I have a little illustration to help us kind of see that we could use some help. So sometimes it's good to have a visual with some of that stuff. So why do we need help? More specifically, why do we need help from God? It's because we're under an impossible load, a weight of sin in our lives that we can't carry. And so I wanted just to identify maybe some of those things that we could be struggling with. And I'm going to fill them up in this little bag I have here. And so um, we have hurt, and we also have resentment. Put that in there. And then we have self-reliance. 
and we have pride. That'll go in there as well. We have anger, and we have abandonment. We'll put that in here. We have lust. We also have abuse. Put that in there. And we have unforgiveness. We also have overeating. Now, these are just a few things that we can struggle with. But then we just carry them around with us. And carrying around all of this weight and trying to hide it, it can work for a while. But in the end, it leads to exhaustion, frustration, anxiety, and fear. And the day we realize we are truly powerless and we we come to humble ourselves by admitting our need for help is the day our life changes and we begin to experience freedom. And that leads us to the next step, and that's believe. We come to believe that God is the one whose power can fully restore us. And the passage that goes with that is Psalm 103, 2 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquity, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your path is renewed like the eagle's. That's a real comforting uh, passage to, to my heart. And while realizing that we're powerless over our sin can be overwhelming, there is a hope in someone greater, one who's powerful enough to restore us, just like it talks about in Psalm 103. And it's God himself, and he longs for us to come to him. So back to our illustration with these pavers. This is what our life is like. We just carry around all this heavy and weighty stuff which adds a huge burden to our lives. And it only gets heavier by the pressures of life. I mean, like, we have this stuff because we've already established that this life is is broken and it's full of brokenness. So we get to have all of this this weight that we carry around, but then we get to go to work. We get to try to love on on our families well. And we have, you know, every other thing imaginable that happens in our lives. And we still get to carry this. Um... And so we were never created to carry this burden of sin. We were actually created to be in a relationship with God who can, who can be the only one that, that carries our burdens. Incidentally, good works doesn't remove any of this. It doesn't remove any of my sins or clears the slate from my past sins. Just like a judge doesn't let a murderer free just because he was a good boy scout or girl scout or did wonderful things for people. No, until we're in a relationship with God, the weight of this world is going to be increasingly crushing. In Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, Jesus tells us, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke of this world is hard and it's heavy. And we can take that yoke and just carry this around for the rest of our lives. Or we can choose Christ's yoke, which leads us to the next step. This thing is pretty heavy. Okay, it's not enough to admit that we're powerless um, and believe that God is the one who can restore us. We must decide whether we can trust him with us or not. This step is possibly the most important step in regeneration. And quite frankly, it's the most important decision you can make in your entire life. All other steps lead to it or are a response to it. Steps 4 through 12 are God's healing plan that come from your decision to trust him. You can't move from here without resolving whether you completely trust him or not. So we've already established that carrying... All of this weight of our, of our sin and our hurts and our brokenness, like from others, like this affects us, and not only us, it affects everybody around us. We all have an unbelievably heavy load on our shoulders, and this is a spiritual reality. And God can lift it. You can't, but he can. If we trust in him, 
not just for an eternal life, some future somewhere, like fire insurance, if you will, but with our will in every aspect of our lives, we can walk in freedom. Is he your savior and your Lord? So 12 years ago, I didn't trust God. In fact, at the time, I was at the end of my rope. I had started Regen three times, and I quit all before getting to step four. The last time I quit was because I met a, a girl, and we started a date, and I ended up finding all my worth and value in her. I thought, surely I was fixed, and I didn't need God because I, all, my, all my bases were covered. But when that relationship ended, I was devastated. I was completely crushed. And I was actually mad at God for how my life turned out. And by God's grace, a friend shared with me Proverbs 19.3. And it says this, when a man brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. This, it was by God's grace that I realized that it was my choices that got me into that situation. I was well acquainted with the steps at that point. But it wasn't until that moment that I trusted that, that God can and I can't. And so at that time, I came to trust him and I put all of this stuff with him and I trusted him with it. Now, I still pick it up from time to time, but I know how to walk through those steps to be able to put it back where it belongs to the, to the person who can carry that and it's not me. I was encouraged to go back to regeneration. That's how I learned to put that where it belongs. And I committed to do all that was asked of me. I was shown how to be a fully devoted follower of Christ. I learned how to stop carrying all this weight and to trust Christ with it and myself. We will never be able to gain true freedom in healing unless we can trust the Lord with everything, including all of our sin and brokenness. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to destroy and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And Jesus wasn't just talking about eternity. He was talking about life here and right now. Is your life abundant because you've completely surrendered to Christ? And I don't, I don't mean like some, hey, we're never going to have any need or want or all that sort of stuff. I'm just talking about is your life abundant even when circumstances come that it, you're not devastated by them, but you have a, a hope, a hope in Christ to be able to move forward even in the valleys? That's what I'm talking about. Or is your life burdensome without Christ? Would you consider joining us on Monday nights? As mentioned during the announcements earlier, open enrollment for regeneration is tomorrow and it goes to the end of September. Don't wait. I hope to see you there. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end just praying over us, um, just part of a psalm, Psalm 34, 21, 20 through 22. Um, so pray with me. Lord, our soul waits for you. You are our help and our shield our hearts are glad in you because we trust in your holy name. Let your steadfast love, O oh Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Lord, thank you for this opportunity um, to speak with my friends. Lord, I pray, Lord, that um, by your spirit, Lord, we can truly admit and we can come to believe that, that you are who you say you are. And then finally, Lord, that we can trust in you. We can trust in your saving grace. Um, Lord, to take care of all of our burdens. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And I thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen.